It is the uh, Jeff Santos show that you are tuned into 33 minutes past the hour. And speaking of um, uh, progressives, I see that Randy Weingarten is uh, on the uh, program on MSNBC. Isn't that nice to see? She's welcome, of course, anytime here on the Jeff Santos show. Our good friend John Shelton is a um, vice president of Wisconsin AFT. So maybe there's an opportunity in the future to get uh, Miss Weingarten. Uh, our next guest is the Renaissance man of the Jeff Santos show. He is the executive director of Democracy Watch News. He is uh, usually with us on a Friday, sometimes a Thursday, but uh, we always connect with him on a weekly basis. He is... Um, live in the uh, somewhere in undisclosed location in the uh, great state of Washington in Seattle Metro. He's Mark Taylor Canfield. Mr. MTC, how are you, sir? Oh, Jeff, it's summertime and living's easy. The sun is out and it's 76 degrees. Time oh, to grab boy. your sun hat and break open a microbrew. Because we're in Seattle and summer's here at last. Yeah, it's been a 76-degree day, which for Seattle this year is a record because it's been a cold spring. And, uh, uh, no, everybody's out. Uh, everybody's on the – there's so many boats, Jeff. It's like – I'm sure it's like Chesapeake Bay. There's like so many boats out on the bay that you could walk across, you know, to Bainbridge Island basically from boat to boat because everybody is out. And tomorrow it's going to be the same thing. It's the opening of boating season. You know, here and all sorts of crazy stuff that's going on. So there's going to be so many boats and uh, everybody's going to be out. In Seattle, people just kind of hide under the streets during the winter, during the fall and winter and early spring because it's cold and rainy. And then as soon as the sun comes out, everybody just shows up and you, you wonder, where were all these millions of people for the last six months? But they were all hiding. Uh, my theory is that there are these sort of underground uh, little resorts for swimming pools and stuff under the streets where they all go. I don't know because... But today, Jeff, I, I'm reporting from Seattle that there are women in bikinis out on the beach in Seattle. So it's looking like Southern Cali, Canada. You will hear occasional seaplane, unfortunately, I think, because I am at a, uh, an airport. It's a seaplane airport, Kenmore seaplanes. And we're flying, we're hoping, yeah, to catch a flight up to Victoria, Canada, BC, British Columbia, and then do some kayaking from there because... We can either rent some kayaks up there, but or some of us, a couple of us have inflatable kayaks. So we can actually take the kayak on the plane and head to Canada for a couple of days while the, the weather's great. But I just wanted to report that it's not rainy and dreary in Seattle for the first time in about six months. So it's kind of cool. And that's why that's why we're not seeing you on the video, because you're out there exploring the great Northwest. <laughs> uh, hey, speaking of yes. the great Northwest. Your hockey team has got a chance to go to the next round tonight or tomorrow night. I don't know when the next oh game is. Oh, my. Um, oh, that's so weird that you say that word, because the there's a seaplane right The seaplane right in front of us right now has the, the Kraken um, logo on the side, and it says Seattle Kraken. It, there are actually a couple seaplanes that have the Kraken logo on it. I mean, they're everywhere. They're, the whole city is in love with them. We were out at a bar last night where I like to play pool. and Actually, sometimes it's in ping pong and – there's all these other games, but also a lot of my friends in Seattle love pinball. Seattle is crazy about pinball. The pinball museum is here. There's like, there are bars where there are dozens of pinball machines, and a lot of them are old vintage ones, and those are the people, you know, those are the ones that people kind of like. So it's cool. It's cheap entertainment. You know, everybody has fun. You have a beer. You play some pinball, play some pool. We were out last night, and all of a sudden, uh, everybody started talking about the Kraken because they were showing replays from the series they've been having with Colorado, and it's mind-blowing. I mean. Uh, that's, I was trying to explain to my friends who love the NFL, I'm like, look, look, man, during the playoffs in the Stanley Cup, Cup playoffs, these are like a World Series, oh, you know, series of World Series is here. They have, they're, these are seven-game series, and they're like, that's crazy. Why don't they just play one game and they throw a bunch of touchdowns and win? I'm like, no, that's not hockey. No, it's also not, not basketball, hockey. by the way. No, but, you know, who, who would know that exactly. in Seattle? Since, yeah, in Seattle, no, we don't have a basketball team, so nobody knows anything. Concussion Central, although there Kraken is are great. Um, um, so is the game they tonight have or tomorrow? The best night? job of uh, tonight. They they have done the best. Yeah. Uh, t the Kraken team has done the best promotion of any sports team I've ever seen in Seattle. I mean, they're everywhere, and they have this kind That's of great. just kind of everyday kind of down home working class kind of image. So people relate to them. 
And yeah, the guys at the but bar last night, they're all talking about the Kraken. Well, yeah, by the way, it's game so. six tonight yep. Yep. out of seven. You guys can win it all. Tonight, you can go to the next round yeah. and play uh, this Vegas, not, or I guess, yeah. or whoever. Yeah. So, yeah. they won last night. The first team to win. Yeah, and how are the Bruins, Bruins doing, Jeff? Hey, we're uh, we're gonna hopefully yeah. we, we screwed up the other day. The goaltender must have been on Quaaludes or something. He decided to go for a little walk or a skate, and he got out of the net, and he basically gave the puck to the Panthers, and they had an open net, and he lost in overtime because of this uh, stupidity. Oh. Uh, so, anyways, that the Ouch. Bruins outplayed them, but they should be able to win tonight, I think, in Florida. Uh, so we'll hopefully uh, get a chance yeah. to play either Toronto or Tampa in the next round, which is going to be tough for the Bruins. Hey, uh, I want to talk quickly oh, about the greatest... something that – go ahead. One of the I'm greatest – move away from the seaplane here so I can hear you. Okay. Go ahead, Jeff. We know Mark is next to water. You said one of the greatest, and then you you got cut off there. Oh, I went the the Bruins, one of the greatest hockey oh, teams yeah. in the history of the sport. I mean, oh yeah, they broke the record going. for the best. But best the Boston, you guys team. always have the best sports. What do you? Well, how do you Celtics explain that? How do you explain that Boston always have championship uh, we, sports we just, forever? We we have a lot of smart people here, wicked smart, and uh, so we get there. They, they yeah, they and they're crazy about sports. sports. That's right. Well, we got all these champions. True the sports Celtics fans. Won. 17, 18, the, the yep. Patriots have won, uh, you know, the most in the 20th yeah. century, 21st century, so all that. And then the Bruins' uh, history goes the back coolest. to the 20s. Yeah. And we won't talk course, about the, the Boston Red Sox until after the curse got lifted, but the, it, the well, curse since of, 2004, of the babe. They have more world championships than any team in the 21st century. Four of them since there you 2004. Go. So there you go. All right, man. Hey, right. assault weapon. You guys once again in Seattle leading the way. Oh. You know, um, what is the situation there? Is it is it in the uh, House and it needs to pass the Senate or the Assembly? I don't know if it's a House or a Senate Assembly there. Um, what is the uh, situation? Okay, I have an exclusive report here for the Jeff Santos show. Um, right. I'm live in Seattle, and Governor Jay Inslee has signed the bill. So as of today, there is uh, a ban on the sale of any assault weapons, semi-automatics. And that includes the AR-15, AK-47s, and 16 you name it, assault rifles. So military style. So he also um, signed a bill which uh, requires gun safety, you know, training for anyone who buys a weapon. Which, you know, I mean, to, to hunters around Washington State, I mean, that's just a no-brainer, you know take your kids out hunting unless of course they've gone through a, a gun training program, but, uh, and also a 10 day waiting period. So that's also a new law in Washington state. So yes, once again, we are leading the way. If you want to know what Jay Inslee has to say about this, I'll quote him quote. I don't care what the NRA thinks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the national rifle association folks, but he's like, yeah, he's summing his nose at them directly. Just saying, you know, we don't care. Now, the Republicans, of course, oh, there goes my, my friends off on the seaplane. The Republicans voted against it, of course. But the majority in the state legislature in both houses are Democrats in 2023. So uh, the Democrats won the day it passed the Senate and Jay Inslee signed it. So it's a done deal. Now, what do you think the Republicans, you guess, Jeff, I think you know, what are, what's the reaction of um, Republicans and NRA lobbyists in the, in the state? Oh, they're gonna they're taking guns away from uh, lawful uh, Americans, and the, these are communists, right. and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna basically you know prevent people from uh, having the access to to shoot the bad guys, and you know this is this is uh, all too okay. uh, communist. Is that is that kind of it, sort of? <laughs> they just filed a major lawsuit. Uh, one of the state uh, legis legislatures head Republicans said, uh, "We are going to overturn this. It's clearly unconstitutional." So there you go. Oh, yeah. So they're filing lawsuits everywhere. And Let more you know, people die. So now it's going to be a legal battle. Unbelievable. Now it's going to be a, a battle in the courts with guess who? Yours and my favorite state attorney general, Bob Ferguson, who actually was on the cover of the Stranger magazine here with kind of the alternative newspaper in town with a bunch of hearts surrounding him. And it was like attorney general heartthrob. 
because everybody loves him. He's just so cool. <laughs> and I've talked to him. He's such a laid back guy, Jeff. Yeah. He's such a nice guy. Hey, kind of like he, the city attorney here. Do you think if Finsley leaves that he could Pete be Holmes governor? Like that too. Do you think he could be governor? Oh, that would be if, great. Uh, but first Finsley he's going to leave. <laughs> Well, he kicked the butts of the Trump administration many times, and then now he's going to kick the butts of the uh, National Rifle Association and the Republicans in the state. Then I'd say the sky's the limit, right? <laughs> Whatever he wants to do. But he's so popular here that he could just keep running for attorney general for the rest of his life and probably get the vote. There are some really, really safe uh, seats, including Pramila Jayapal's seat, who I'm going to visit on Monday to talk about press freedom issues because she's very interested in uh, press freedom in the United States, and especially how media monopolies contribute to that by basically hogging the airways, like, you know, iHeartMedia, formerly Clear Channel. Can I say this on the air? Yeah, they have, they own 855 radio stations around the country. Cumulus Media owns 404. Yep. Westwood oh, yeah. One has like 9,000 affiliates. And then Fox News, they own 227, or they have 227 affiliates, and then about 30 uh, TV stations in every and major city true. in the United States, including <laughs> duopolies, like two major stations in 11 out of 15 major markets. So this is all part of my presentation for Pramila Jayapal, and kudos to her and her staff for being interested. They actually called me and said, hey, you know, I want you to come in and talk to the congresswoman. So I'm so glad, I mean, that we're getting this Well, you don't forget, to uh, you know, as an emissary of the Jeff Santos show, invite her on anytime she wants. Uh, Absolutely. We'd love to have Ms. Jaya yeah. Paul on, tell her about me and, uh, you know, and what we do. And we'll maybe we'll you know, maybe do a little, uh, you know, co-host with uh, with you and and uh, her and, and I on the show. So uh, let's hopefully make that happen because she's uh, she's oh, an important she would be cog. such a great fit. Yeah, she would. Yeah. It would be such a great uh, match you know, on this program because she's so progressive. She's such a fire, fiery uh, progressive on most issues and for being one of. The most, you know, at least prominent members of the of the U.S. Congress, she's incredibly accessible. So she just will hold town hall meetings and say, "Call me," you know. And then next thing you know, you know, you're having meetings with her, and she's like, "Let's talk about this press freedom issue and what I can do." It's not just also I'm listening to my constituents. It's like let's formulate a legislative and public policy change that can address this problem. And that is what an effective public official does: not just sit around and collect campaign contributions so they can win the next election. I mean, she actually tries to get things done and specifically for her constituents, you know, people talk about her running for you know, I, other, you know, offices, but she really is yeah. committed to her district in Washington state. She's in Seattle. So she feels very comfortable here. Her politics match. Oh, there goes. Well, yeah, I mean, like, it's a perfect her match for match her because she's here. coming off with another progressive in McDermott and, you know, and obviously for a while, yeah. Salant was there. Um, you know, um, uh, fellow, uh, well, she's still here, but not after November. Right. Yeah. Yeah, She's still on the council, but not, not after November. She's, but she's even now concentrating a lot on the worker strike back campaign. Let me, let me ask you something, because I think I want to bring in my good friend, John from Minnesota on this too. Um, you know, you, you talk about, uh, you know, the, the journalist killed in Ukraine. And, you know, we talk a lot with our, yeah. with our good, uh, good friends, uh, Brian Garvey and, and Larry Corbaby Wednesday about the situation in Ukraine. And, and frankly, uh, you know, the, uh, the administration um, is, has been slow uh, to react, the Biden administration, um, on going to, uh, to diplomacy. Now, maybe they're doing, as we all hope, and Larry Corb mentions all the time, doing it behind the scenes. But this, this sort of macho uh, kind of approach that uh, even Nancy Pelosi, of all people, is saying, well, they're not there to negotiate, we're there to win. Um, you know, that kind of bombastic language is going nowhere. And I don't know what she's trying to prove. Uh, you know, is she really trying to, you know, um, you know, out tough uh, Donald Trump or anybody else for that matter? It's, it's really, it's really stupid political viewpoints here. Very, very narrow minded. Um, you know, and, and frankly, Pelosi has kind of, been good yeah. on some issues in the House. You know, it, it's not, it doesn't make any sense. Go ahead, and we'll, then we'll bring in our good friend John. Oh, well, they've drawn some kind of line in the sand, so to speak, and I don't know what that's about. I don't know the, I don't know the inside story to that, but if you talk to most members of Congress and even, you know, people in the Democratic Party, by the way, uh, I, I can't let this pass either. Uh, Zoe Zephyr, the only trans member 
of the Montana state legislature just got banned for the rest of the session by a majority Republican yeah, state legislature there. But, um, these folks yeah, are just out of control. But, the Republicans, uh, that is. Yeah, yeah there's no definitely doubt. Um, some Democrats that voted. Well, what I was going to say though, is that what's shocking to me is if you look at the number of votes, uh, for her banning, it was 32 Democrats. So there's obviously some Democrats in Montana who <laughs> are, yeah, need yeah. to be questioned as well. Right. So what's it, that it, about? It's, you know, it's too much. That, that too many people me. who are afraid of their shadow, whether it's in Montana or other parts of the country. Look, you got Joe Manchin, you know, in, at least he's, uh, you know, um, poo pooing about the fact that I'm going to win. You know, I don't care if it's the current Republican governor, who seems to be a lot more, you know, understanding of the working class than uh, Manchin ever was. Um, you know, I mean, it's just pathetic uh, where some of the Democrats well, are. Well, at least we don't have John to deal with Tucker Carlson anymore. That's that's nice. Yes, I'm hey, you know, really ready for that. that Tucker Carlson Press freedom. Is... There you go. Yeah, um, that was uh, ridiculous. Right wing propaganda. You're next with uh, Rock Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santo Show. What do you say, John? Well, yeah, you know the uh, industrial, the military industrial complex is as much a part of the Democratic Party is, a, is part of the Republican Party. It's a part of the billionaire millionaire party that runs both parties and tells us how to think and what to do. And, you know, they're, they're just not going to give up. Uh, they really are not. Nancy Pelosi told Medina Benjamin, you know, uh, yeah, we, we're not negotiating. We're going for victory. You know, uh, since when is it a progressive position? And, and since when, I mean, has she asked the entire country? And, you know, there's a divide and they're dividing the, the corporate Dems through the media are dividing uh, a public opinion so that uh, people who uh, support negotiations are on the far left, you know, and people who support negotiations are on the far right. And they're the healthy middle that wants to just basically spend a trillion dollars a year while, you know, people die in this country for no reason at all, except that we choose to spend money on war, constant war. So this is a big problem and it needs to be addressed. And, you know, I don't know what to say about it, except you have to just keep doubling down and pushing your elected officials and the party to, uh, you know, give us space. They don't want to give us space for, for anything that has that smacks of negotiations, dipo diplomacy, a push for peace. You know, while, uh, yeah, it was 76 in, in Seattle today, you know, who knows? And, and over the summer, it might be 90 for a couple of weeks, like it was, yeah. what was it, last yeah. year? We have a Climate thing called change. global exactly. warming. How is that going yep. to be addressed? If we're spending a trillion dollars on military hardware to send to a country that well, well said, John. Yeah, for what? You know, I was going to and, and, and I was going to respond to that by saying that you have to empower members of the U.S. Congress, like Pramila Jayapal, who who shares your points of view. But I also think it goes beyond that, and I've I've mentioned this before to Jeff is that uh, it's kind of time I think for a whole new generation to take charge. And it's time for a lot of the establishment leaders in the Democratic Party and the Republican Party to just admit that they're kind of out of sync with the times. They're kind of irrelevant. Yep. It's time for them to step aside and let some of the younger folks, people of color, women, have a little bit more power and, you know, decide for themselves. Transgender folks, LBGTQ, you know, whoever has been shut out of both parties. You know, right. I would like and to see them just, have more voices. And it's not That's just why. an identity thing and not just an age thing either, um, uh, Mark, if I can interrupt you, because Bernie Sanders, you know, is 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 81, older than Biden or 82, but he's he's probably more like 50 and probably more like 30 in his progressive ideas. And, you know, and he's white. Um, so, you know, but there's Clyburn, who's an African-American, yeah. who's, who's as backwards as can be. You know, and it's from a state that's as in the Democrats haven't won since 1976, and I think he's been there since 1976. And then, well, then of course, you get well, this I new guy say. Jeffries, who's an African American guy and younger, but really doesn't really have any new ideas. You know, in comparison to say Cory Bush in Missouri or or AOC, you know, in in New York. So it, it's 
it's it's more than than just the identity. I agree with you. We need younger people in general. It's not you know. I mean, there's not a hundred Bernie Sanders walking around there at, at 80 years old. Uh, but I, I think we need to be expecting more. Just because you're 35 and African American or transgender, it doesn't mean you're going to be progressive. So I think we need to make sure we have a little bit of that. But I, I hear you. Yeah. No, that go- that goes without being said, Jeff. You're right there. I, I yeah. just think like uh, I see a political evolution, you know, and that's just from experience. It's from being in a city like Seattle where we were dealing with transgender issues, you know, years ago. We already got over ourselves on all that stuff, you know, about pronouns and, you know, gender identity. It just became a normal thing in Seattle to ask people what pronoun they preferred or whatever. And so I think for the rest of the country, it can be a shock. They're like, wait a minute, what is all this? Right. But I'm sorry, folks. It's a story that has legs. Just like my men's bathroom. (laughs) Yeah. It's a story that has legs, as we say in journalism. Um, But by the way, I wanted to, uh, you know, John, I I really, I want to play Minneapolis sometimes because they have such a great local music history. We just played a show at the famous Nectar in Seattle where I've seen some crazy stuff like Sir Mix-a-Lot do two shows in a row and all sorts of stuff there. Um, They are a local club that everybody loves because they have a super professional stage and lighting and sound system and sound guy. They're very great at what they do, but they're much more open, I think, to local bands who are really good that aren't getting as much um, stage presence other places. So occasionally they recruit me and they'll say, Mark, come on down to the Nectar. And I know, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get, you'll get your band or, or you and some really cool musicians that, you know, up on stage to do some stuff and we'll give you a chance to just, you know, jam with people too, if you want. It's like, you can invite people up on stage. If you see people in the audience that are musicians, cause you know, a lot of times, most of the people in the audience are musicians. It's that kind of whole thing about Seattle, like my dog has a band, my grandma's in a band, <laughs> yeah. everybody has a band, and every drummer has six bands. Yeah, I, I don't know. Because every drummer I, I talked to except John one that night good. said, But if, if Mark, if, if John they're like, I'm working stage, in five projects right now, and I, I have my I solo video, thing too. And I want video. Like, okay, that, when can you and, book uh, me in? And he's like, well, next February around May, you know, 19 or 2028, maybe. So... <laughs> Yeah, no, drummers are gold. But I did find a couple drummers at the Nectar. It's also a great place to meet musicians, people moving through town. That's where they go to. Anybody who goes to Seattle and you're just visiting, if you love music, go to the Nectar and go to Mojam Night where they have a featured band. It's not the house band. It's always an invited guest band. And they're usually really great musicians from Seattle. And then uh, then they have a jam session afterwards where a lot of the local musicians who know each other just get up on stage and play for hours and people love it they dance their asses off and they just get crazy and have so much fun it's what seattle's all about is the it's the independent uh and there's also a new run my friend for the northwest independent music awards so i've got some stuff that's being submitted there so we'll see what happens with that jeff but uh, that sounds like a great idea to me we need to celebrate more local artists of course there's my friend eva walker on kexp which anybody can listen to anywhere in the world she has a show called audio oasis and she plays only unsigned um and indie bands you know bands that just aren't That's with the, the corporations already so it's a great way to run my friend uh, have, have yourself a good weekend else. just to let you know so i love that kind of media that's why i love your show only you'll one hear hour that you never hear anywhere else that's what i look right. for in media only one hour so anybody who's not week, listening mark. to jeff santos i guess you can't hear me because you're not listening but you're kind of not you're not really very smart at this point you need to like get, <laughs> get a little more clever Tune in. All right, Mark, we got to run. Next week, we're going to be on at a different time, so we'll talk to you uh, about that as well. Uh, hey, keep on fighting for us, man, out there in the 206. Appreciate you. Uh, I want to thank Have a great uh, weekend, great Jeff. Love you guys. Take care. You too, man. I want to thank a great team in Boca, led by Freddie Santori, and, of course, uh, Lauren and um, Josh um, and uh, Jalen as well. Uh, Folks, keep on fighting peacefully. Have yourself a wonderful weekend. Back Monday, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock Eastern time. For those on the West Coast, that's 12 to 1, just one hour. And then come June, July, it may be completely different. It may be more hours. It may be more places to watch and listen. Uh, Until then, my name is Jeff Santos. Right now, it's my time to say I got to go.